الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنزلنا إليك الكتاب لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله All praises are for Allah Azza wa Jalla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has indeed blessed us and by extension blessed the whole mankind with a very great religion, the religion of guidance. In the past, Allah sent many prophets on the face of the earth. And with these prophets, there was a following and uh, these prophets came with a book from Allah and these prophets propagated a religion. And that religion had a name also with them that we know about today. The religion that Noah salam, propagated, there was a name for that. And there was a name for the scriptures that were revealed to him. And for Musa salam, when he came, he was given the Torah. And the, the religion that he propagated, there was a name given to that and a name given to the people who followed that religion. And so when Isa salam came, he also received a revealed scripture from Allah. And that had a name and a religion that he propagated and the name of the people also they had a name. And when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as the seal and final of all prophets and messengers on the face of the earth, the religion that he was given got the name of Islam. And Islam, Allah chose such a name which happens to be common, a common name to every Nabi and every religion in the past. Because Islam doesn't connect you to what you are doing as individuals and Islam the word Islam doesn't connect you to the prophet you are following but Islam connects you directly to your Lord and it tells you you are one who surrenders to Allah that you who follow Islam means you are submitting to Allah so it is not it has no such name that connects with a prophet it has no such name that connects with some action that you have done. The Jews in the Quran, they are called Yahud. Yahud. And the Christians in the Quran, they are called Nasara. Yahud comes from the Arabic word Hada Yahudu, which means to turn to and to repent. Taba Yatubu, Taubatan. Tauba, Tauba means repentance. And why? Because of the fact that they had failed in fulfilling some injunctions, Allah ordered them to repent. And they repented to Allah, but even after that repentance, they still turned away. So because they all at one time repented to Allah, they were called Al-Yahud, those who repented to Allah. And the Nasara, it comes from the word Nasar. Nasar means to help. And from the word Nasr, you have the Ansar. The Ansar of Medina were the helpers to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they were called Ansar because they helped the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and helped Islam. But these, the disciples of Isa Alayhi Salam, they were called Nasara because they helped Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. When Isa Alayhi Salam came and he said to them, as Allah mentions in the Quran in Surah as saf Man ansari ilallah, who will be my helpers for Allah? They said, Qalu, they said, we are Allah's helpers. So their name in the Quran is known as Nasara. Allah uses Nasara for them. But Allah uses Muslim for us. And Muslim is one who submits to Allah. And Allah tells us in the Quran that this name that have been given to you 
and your religion, Islam, which has been given to you, that was used from far before, from the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Subhanallah. It means submitters to the will of Allah. It means those who surrender themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah blessed us with this perfect way of life called Islam and has blessed humanity with this complete way of life called Islam. And this complete way of life which Allah has given to us, He has sent the book of guidance to us and to mankind by extension, the book of guidance which is called Al-Quran. In the, in the book itself, Allah says that this Quran is hudan lin nas. It is a guidance for the whole of mankind. Not the guidance for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. Not the guidance for the Arabs alone. Not for the guidance, not the guidance of those who follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But hudan lin nas, it is a guidance for the whole of mankind. So Islam is a, re a universal religion and the message of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a universal message. So the Quran is a universal book and the Rasul is a universal Nabi. Subhanallah. In the times before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because prophethood did not come to an end as yet, wherever people lived, Allah sent messengers. So at one point in time, there were quite a number of Rasul and messengers at one time. So they all had to follow that messenger. Ibrahim salam was alive. His nephew, Prophet Lut salam was sent to a certain locality. When his son, Ismail salam grew up, he was in one place. When his other son, Ishaq salam became a prophet, he was in another place. At the time of Isa salam, his uncle Zakaria was a prophet. And his cousin, Yahya John the Baptist, was a Nabi, each sent to different places, but preaching the same message. But when the Prophet ﷺ came, he came as the final messenger, and the only prophet after Jesus, Prophet Isa ﷺ, 570 years after Prophet Isa ﷺ, and after him, no prophet will come again. So his message, while Isa ﷺ said it, Himself to the people, he said, I have not been sent except to the lost house of the children of Israel. I have been sent to the Israelites. I have been sent to them. He came from the lineage of Bani Israel. He is from the progeny of those prophets, Yaqub salam, coming down the line. So he was an Israelite prophet. So subhanallah, he came to a selected group. Because prophets at that time came to a selected group. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, Allah announced in the Quran that he is lil alameen. This prophet is not for Makkah, is not for Medina, is not for the Arabs, it is not for the Romans and the Persians. It is lil alameen. He is prophet for the whole mankind, universal prophet. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah announced in the Quran. O Muhammad, we have not sent you except as a mercy for the whole mankind until the day of judgment. Subhanallah. His nabuwat will never stop. Allahu Akbar. Musa alayhi salam, his following came to an end when Prophet Isa alayhi salam came. So the people who were following Musa alayhi salam, when they remained alive to meet the Prophet Isa alayhi salam Jesus, their job was to stop following Musa and begin to follow Isa alayhi salam. That was import, that was compulsory upon them. Because no two prophets will preach something different. The source is the same, Allah. The light is the same, no two different lights. The same one light. The same being from whom the Torah came is the same being from whom the Injil came. Allah will not say something different in the Injil and say something different in the Torah. These words are coming from Lahul Mahfuz. The same asal, the same source. The prophets came at different time to different people. So while revealing laws, sometimes certain laws were given tempor temporarily. Until the halat and the state of the people changed. 
And when the people who followed Isa salam, they remain alive to witness the coming and the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said that, that they were supposed to accept him and follow him. Even in the scriptures of Isa alayhi salam, he told the people that when that Prophet comes, he shall guide you unto all truth and he shall speak in the name of his Lord and you must follow him, subhanallah. In the fact, in the scriptures of Isa alayhi salam, in the Injil, it is mentioned where he called the Prophet by name that says, Ahmad will come after me. Subhanallah. In details, because Isa alayhi salam spoke in the Aramaic language. The Aramaic language was the, the language of his people at that time. The Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. And Aramaic is not so much different from what? Arabic. Subhanallah. Ila, Ila. Subhanallah. Isa in the Quran is his name. In his language, Esau. In Aramaic. Esau. Isa and Esau. Very close, the language. So he called Ahmad by name. Subhanallah. The Prophet's name. So this is why those who did not choose to follow the matter is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they are guilty of rejecting a true prophet. And that is a grave sin that can take a person to kufr if he knowingly rejects a true prophet who came from Allah. And this is why the Jews were cursed by Allah. Because although they were alive and in front of them the prophet Isa alayhi salam Jesus came they recognized him to be a true messenger of Allah. They rejected him and called him an imposter. This is why they were cursed by Allah. And this is why Allah condemned the Jews and the Christians in the Quran because they knew Prophet Muhammad was a true prophet. They saw the miracles. Whatever they asked him about Jesus, about Mary, about Joseph in the past, about Jacob, about the people of the cave, for which Surah Kahf was revealed, they asked him about the soul. In fact, some of them came and they said, we are going to ask Muhammad some questions. If he answers these questions, then it means he's a true prophet because nobody besides a prophet could have answers for these questions. And they asked him and he answered, Jibreel alayhi salam came and still they did not believe. They were so attached to Judaism, a Yahudiyat. That they will just not move away from that for the Prophet. They sometimes came to the Muslims and they said, We know a prophet is to come at this time, but we thought that he will be an Israelite prophet, not an Ismailite prophet. Because that jealousy came down between Ismail and, 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 and Ishaq. From Ishaq, the Israelite prophets came. And from Ismail, only one prophet came, Muhammad. And until today, that jealousy and envy is still there between the Arabs and the Israel. The Arabs are descendants of Ismail alayhi salam. And the Bani Israel, the Jews, the Israelites are from Bani Israel. But they are family. They are their, their fathers are brothers. Subhanallah. Ishaq on one side, Ismail alayhi salam. But they had no enmity among themselves. Allah made Ismail a Nabi. He made Ishaq a Nabi. It's the same like two brothers are close together and they love each other but their children become bitter enemies to each other and they fight each other. And the grandchildren now will pull, pull swords at each other's throat. And it will go down like that in generation and that how it, that's how it happened. Subhanallah. So the difference was that Allah blessed the Ismailites and he favored them by causing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be born from among them. But because of what they did to Maryam and what they did to Isa salam, and what they did to Yahya John the Baptist, Allah cursed them permanently. So the Quran says, Dhuribat alayhimu dhillatu wal maskana. Humiliation and poverty has been struck over them until the day of judgment. You may wonder, well, where is the poverty? Well, if you teach somebody money and you are living on it, you are poor. It's as simple as that. If you have no land, you have no property. But if you teach your neighbor's land and you kill him 
and you live in his land now and after 20 years somebody will think that you have a lot of property but that's stolen property so a person who lives in stolen property is really doesn't he doesn't have anything and we know the history of that until today subhanallah so my dear beloved brothers and my dear elders the topic really is that Allah has blessed us with this beautiful deen and has given us the book the Quran as a guidance not only for the Muslims but Allah says nas, it is a guidance for the whole mankind and has sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not for one territory not for one era not for one season no for all times until the day of judgment and the point I was making is that following Musa would have come to a stop at some point in time when Isa Alaihi Salam came and following Isa alayhi salam would have come to a halt at another time when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. But following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will never come to a stop until the day of judgment. Every man who bo is born from now until the day of judgment. In fact from the time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet until the day of judgment. He, it is compulsory upon him to accept no one as, as his Nabi except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he is the final prophet. He is the seal of all prophets. There is no prophet to come after him. So there is no prophet to wait for. Even when Isa alayhi salam comes back to kill the Dajjal and the Antichrist, the one who will impose him and the one who will claim to be Jesus, still... Isa alayhi salam will not allow people to follow him. He will say the final prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the one you must follow. The law of the Quran is the final law revealed on the face of the earth. Subhanallah. So when Isa alayhi salam returns, which is our belief as Muslims, he will not return to propagate his religion. He will not return to propagate his book, the Injil or the Gospel. He will be sent back only for one mission. And that is to finish and destroy the Antichrist. Why was he given that job? It is because of, fact that, of the fact that this man, this Satan and this evil man who will come, of all the prophets, he will claim to be Jesus. So in order to prove to the people he is not Jesus, Allah will send back the real Jesus. That's the hikmah and the wisdom. Why Allah chose Isa alayhi salam for that task. Allah didn't have to send back any prophet. Allah himself could destroy the Dajjal. Isn't that so? Allah destroyed nations and nations in the past. But what, what is the hikmah? He will have a large following. He will have a massive following. Because people, he will be performing miracles. The Antichrist, the Dajjal. Any miracle, he will kill a person and revive him to life. The people will be amazed. They will accept him and they will say, this is the real Jesus. Look, he's here, he's back. So how do you remove the doubts of the mind of the people? The real Isa alayhi salam, Jesus will come back. Allah will send him on the shoulders of two angels from the skies and the heavens. And then he will appear. And when the Dajjal sees him, he will run for his life until Isa alayhi salam will catch up with him and kill him and destroy him. And then the people will realize that that was the false man. This is the real Jesus. And because the Christians have taken the cross, he will win the Christians by propagating the cross. But when the real Isa alayhi salam Jesus comes, he will destroy the cross because he never preached a religion connected to the concept of Trinity, which is the cross. He will destroy it. And the Quran says there will be no one who will accept the religion of Isa alayhi salam before he passes away. It means at that time, people will see that the religion of Isa alayhi salam was Tawheed, belief in only one and one Allah and no Father, Son and Holy Ghost and Trinity. And now they will change over to follow him. And that is when a time, a period of time will come on the face of the earth where all the people living will be believers and Allah. That's during the time of the Yajuj and Majuj, the Gog and the Magog, and when the Dajjal will be slain. But anyhow, let's not move away from the topic. It is about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the 
the universal prophet and Allah has sent the prophet to explain this book which Allah has sent to mankind. Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Wa anzalna ilayka al-kitab, O Muhammad, O Prophet, we have sent this book to you, li tu bayyina linasi ma nuzila ilayhim, so that you may explain this book. This book, which has been revealed to mankind, you will explain it to them." So the job of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a messenger and as a prophet was to explain the Holy Quran through his blessed words and through his blessed actions. When Allah orders an action to be done, He shows the followers what how to do it. Allah says in the Quran, "Wa aqimus salat," establish salat. The question that comes in the mind to the companions at that time: What is this salat about? How should we establish salat? So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam practically demonstrated to them what is this salat, what do you say in the salat, how much rakats in a certain salat, what are the timings you perform salat. Allah ordered wa aqimu salat. Allah says wa atu zakat and give zakat. How much you should give, on what you should give, to whom you should give, who should give. The Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and he explained every single thing. Subhanallah. Every single thing in details about the fasting. Allah says, the shahr of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, you must fast. What time to start? What time to stop? What you can do? What you can't do? If you miss it, then what? Subhanallah. Who is doing that? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Marriage. The topic of marriage. Which woman you can marry to? Whom you cannot marry to, Subhanallah. Every single thing, what you need to do to marry, what is farz and compulsory to be established for marriage. When does the marriage come to an end? Every thing. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent by Allah to explain this book, and his entire life was an explanation of this holy Quran, Subhanallah. The halal, the haram. The commendable, the mustahab, those things that are liked by Allah, those things that are detested by Allah, the injunctions, the prohibitions, Subhanallah, those things that are good, those things that are bad, those things you should do, you must do, or it is better you do, those things that is not permissible, it is haram, forbidden, unlawful, or it is not good to do or encouraged to do. Every single thing in detail, connected to every part of the life of a human being, every aspect of the life of a human being. Your trade, what do you do for a living? You buy, you sell. What do you buy? What do you sell? How do you charge people? Every single thing, Subhanallah. In everything that any human being can do, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to teach mankind about that. This is why, from the birth of a child until his death, everything is there in Islam, Subhanallah. Every single thing, every single thing. So. After the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam preached and propagated day and night this religion of Islam, with verses of the Quran coming from the highest heaven from Allah subhanahu wa taala, from Lauhul Mahfuz. Sometimes one verse will come. Sometimes half of a verse will come. Sometimes ten verses will come. Sometimes the entire chapter will be revealed. Over a period of 23 years, the entire Quran was revealed, the entire Quran was explained, and the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to an end. Subhanallah. Every single thing that man needs to know, with respect to what is right, what is wrong, what is encouraged, what is discouraged, what is good, what is bad, what Allah is pleased with. What Allah is not pleased with every single word, every single action, every single law, which was given, Subhanallah, in Islam. And when everything was given in Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed in the Holy Quran and said, "Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiitu lakum al Islam dina." After the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had preached religion 
Islam for 23 years from the age he, when he was 40 years of age until when he had reached 63 years of age he preached night and day revelation came to him one after the other in a day after two days at during the night in the morning in the evening revelation will come Jibreel salam will come to him at different times the entire Quran was revealed our religion was perfected and completed and Allah sent a seal and a stamp saying today I have completed subhanallah al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum today so long you have been in this deen so long the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been with you Allah is saying on that day which was the day of Arafah this day I have perfected religion Islam is now perfect Islam is now completed Allah says and I have completed my favors upon you and now I am pleased with Islam as your religion so the religion of Allah is Islam the religion Allah accepts is Islam in an, is Islam in another eye it says in Nadina in the Islam the religion that is acceptable to Allah is Islam so when we look at what has been discussed already my dear beloved brothers if we are asked what is Islam what is Islam <coughs> we will understand that Islam is that religion which Allah has sent Allah has sent the book of guidance the Holy Quran and Allah has sent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to explain this, this religion. So this is why, because this is the basis of our religion, this is the foundation of our religion. Everything goes back to these sources. Subhanallah. What is right in Islam has to be right in the Quran and the Sunnah. What is wrong in Islam has to be wrong in the Quran and the Sunnah. Something can't be right for you and I, but it is condemned in the Quran and the Sunnah. Then we, we are practicing something else, not Islam. If something, any Muslim sees something good, and he says it is allowed, and he says it is permissible, but the Quran says it's wrong, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it's wrong, then we will say you are wrong and the Quran and the Sunnah is right. You take back your opinion, give it to somebody, but that is not tolerated in Islam. This is why, when the, after the Prophet wasallam left this world, he did everything. He taught us every single thing in the matters of eats, drinks, subhanallah, every single thing you can think about, you will find that in the traditions of the Prophet wasallam. You will find that in the explanation of the Holy Quran, which is the tafsir. But the Prophet wasallam, after he left and he returned to Allah, the Ummah started to grow more and more. And the Ummah increased. And Islam started to spread far and wide. And people started to accept Islam. <coughs> and more and more countries accepted Islam. And more and more people accepted Islam. And Islam reached almost nearly every nook and corner of the then world, subhanAllah. But with the spreading of Islam and the far reaching of Islam, what happened was this. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa warned us about that. He says, whatever came to the Jews and the Christian will come over you also. What came to those people in the past? As uh, the time, the period became further and further away from their prophets, the people started to interfere with the teachings that came from the prophet. This is what happened. They started to distort the teachings. They started to twist the teachings. They started to make the teachings convenient for their own selves. Because of the fact that they were not practicing the religion, they found simple rules to be very difficult. So they changed the laws. It was not long after Isa salam returned to Allah. Within the two century, by the third century, they already had brought about the concept that God had a son and his name was Jesus. That God shared divinity with Jesus. They already brought about the concept of Mary, the mother of God, as Holy Ghost being an entity from the tree. 
They all brought this within the first century, century after Isa alayhi salam returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was lifted, it, lifted up bodily by Allah. In such a short space of time, in fact, Hafiz ibn Kathir says in his book, in his great tariq, Hafiz ibn Kathir was not only a great mufassir of the Holy Quran, but he was a great mu'arrik, a very great historian. And his famous book, on the history from the time of Adam salam until the time he lived. It's called Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya. Voluminous book on the history, the prophets, what they did throughout. And then with the comprehensive uh, life of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, as soon as Isa alayhi salam left back and returned to Allah when he was bodily lifted into heaven, the people became doubtful. And they divided themselves who followed Isa into three groups. And Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him, they did not crucify him, وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But they became doubtful as to what happened to Isa. He just disappeared for them. He just disappeared. They didn't know where he went. And Allah took him up in the heaven bodily, straight up into the heaven. Subhanallah. The Quran says that. So now, because his ending was not a natural death, they became confused. Who was this man, Jesus? Walking on water, reviving the dead? Who is this man? Some of them said, he claimed to be a prophet and a messenger, so we will accept him to be a prophet and messenger. A small group remained with that belief. He was a messenger. The other group says, no, he was too great. He was too great to be a simple prophet. Look at the miracles he performed. No prophet before performed those miracles. He had to be a reincarnate of God himself. So he was God who existed in the what? In the form of man. And that's exactly what that, that verse of the Bible was, was uh, interpolated in the Bible. You know, in the, in the, in the, the epistles or the scriptures of Paul in the Bible where he says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was sent among man and, and all this, you know, in other words, the word became flesh. Who was that flesh? Jesus. So that word which was God, he became flesh. That's the actually source of their belief that God that came in the form of Jesus. And that's a belief, an official belief of, of some of them until today. So he was an, an incarnate of Allah, of God. So he was in the form of flesh. And the third group says, no. He is too great to be a prophet. And he can't be God himself. He has to be the son of God. So this is the third group. That emerged immediately as he passed away. And they all became confused about this great prophet that came to them, Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whatever passed over them, where these people started to buy into new teachings to sue themselves. And they begin, they started to twist the teachings and distorted the teachings. So too there will be people in my ummah who will do the same thing or they will try to do the same thing. They will try to do the same thing. So therefore, the Prophet wasallam did not leave this world as yet. And there was somebody who was claiming to be another prophet, who was Musaylama. Musaylama Kadhab. Subhanallah. And he wrote a letter to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Allah has uh, made me a prophet and he has divided this rule between two people, you and I. So you rule Hijaz and the land of Arabia and I will rule on this side. <laughs> the Prophet wrote back a letter to him. He says, Kadhabta ya adu wallah, O enemy of Allah, you have lied. During the time of Abu Bakr, he became, his end came, he was destroyed. And then a woman after him became a prophet also. And this fitna started. Using Islam, people started to bring new teachings into Islam. And what happened is that what occurred in the past, this started to happen also. But remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the responsibility to protect Islam and to protect the Holy Quran until the Day of Judgment. So no matter what, no matter who will come and how many people will come with a new twist and a new turn and a new color to teachings 
Allah will always preserve the true teachings until the day of judgment because he has given the assurance to do that and he has taken that responsibility to do that. So we will close today and inshallah with this topic we will continue next week.